stay on the pace. I will open up for questions. Sam, you guys were up relatively big at half, and they came back and cut it to one. Um, what was kind of the, the vibe within the team and as a leader? What, what did you guys do to, to step up and get that thing back under control? Um, I mean, that happens all the time in college basketball. Obviously, they, they came out on the second half and punched us in the face. Um, but I think kind of like what we saw in, in Colorado, just the resiliency of the group and staying together um, was something that you know we were preaching in the huddles. And um, each and every time that we broke the huddle, we wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page and um, you know just trusted our principles defensively. Um, and you know once they, after they got really hot in that first whatever six or seven minutes, I, they they started to cool off. And uh, you know that that first part is a big credit to them. They shot it really well in that stretch. Um, but yeah, just trusting our principles and, and trusting the process. They had a chance to take the lead there off that turnover. Mano goes down, he's the chase down block, and then you guys kind of spark a big run from there. What, what did that do for you guys, that effort play there to kind of get that? Yeah, um, I mean, you said it. I mean, effort plays can, can really change the outlook of halves and, and games completely. Um, obviously, that being blocks, dunks, you know, whatever to get the crowd into it. Um, so that was big time. Obviously, that was that was a big change in the momentum for us, and we got some shots to fall. Um, and got some shots that we wanted to get. I thought a few of the times we forced some, especially early in transition. Um, but you know, like I said earlier, just sticking to our principles defensively and um, trusting the process after after that effort play from Emmanuel. Yeah. Okay, so you're kind of, I mean, you're a big three-point shooter. I mean, for them to come out in the second half and shoot as well, I mean, how, what is that like to defend for you who does that same type of thing and how much does it make you want to go out there and shoot a few threes? Yeah, I just keep playing hard and then, like, I, I, know, I know I'm a shooter, like, three-point shooter, but I, like, still have to drive to the basket, so they, it's hard to guard, guard me, so, like, yeah, like, I just, I just keep playing hard for, 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 the, for the win. Stretch where Kase reeled off 10 straight points and kind of got some life into the offense. How, how big of an asset was he tonight just to, to keep things on schedule offensively? Yeah, I mean, that's Kase to a T. He can, uh, when I first got here, um, he wasn't here. He was still playing with, with Japan. But um, yeah, his first few weeks, he just lit it up. And I was like, wh who is this? I mean, obviously, I knew who he was, but I, I, was, I was very shocked. Um, but that's what, especially when he comes off the bench, that's what he can bring for us. And he's a big spark plug, um, and he can just take the lid off the basket for us. So obviously he did that tonight. Um, but we're going to continue to to rely on him um, to stretch the floor um, and be that guy for us. Okay, so how, you were here last year when you guys lost on opening night to Western Illinois. How much of a step forward is it for you guys to, you know, be kind of be in a similar situation and, and figure it out and come out on top? Yeah, last year we couldn't win because like we like start playing like for individual like stuff like since we, since we start playing. But like like this year like we play together like we talk together like we we play each other. That's why like we can't win like that today. Like that. I think one thing just to add that um, in programs that I've been around, when it turns into to player led um, programs. And when it comes, obviously, it comes from the head coach and the coaching staff all the time. Um, but when it comes from the players and the players buy into the process and um, we're preaching our principles, it means that much more. Um, so when it's, it's player led, it, it has a big impact on, on the culture and just the togetherness and resiliency of a team. How did the players lead tonight? What? Sorry. How did the players lead tonight? Um, I mean, just speaking up in the huddles, um, whether that was in timeout huddles or um, in the flow of the game. You know, when the ball goes out of bounds or whatever. Um, you know, me personally, I think it's kind of my job to, to rally the troops every time um, and make sure we're, we're on the same page and, and bring the team into the huddles. Um, and that's just been a big, big emphasis that I've talked about with Coach Hoiberg. Um, it's just when we're in the huddles, we're on the same page. Um, and just me and him, our relationship, you know, I always have to have his ear, he always has mine. Um, so just talking strategy and making sure everyone's on the same page. You had 18 of your 22 in the second half. Was that a conscious effort by you to kind of step up and, and be that guy that, that helped save the game a little bit? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that, you know, I came in out of halftime and I was like, I need to do this, I need to do that. Um, my whole career, I always try to let the game come to me. Um, 
and I felt that you know my role is to do whatever I can to help this team win. And tonight, um, it was it was score and and facilitate obviously, um, but you know I wasn't particularly pleased with my defensive play, um, but so I'm gonna need to to focus on that. But yeah, I mean I just want to do whatever I can to to help this this team come out on top. Sam, how big was uh, <clears throat> Jawan? He had eight eight offensive rebounds, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, eight offensive rebounds is pretty ridiculous. Um, but he's he's just such a big energy guy for us. He can, um, the team can rally around his play. He makes so many hustle plays, like we talked about, and effort plays. Um, and offensive rebounds, I think I've talked about it before, but they're so demoralizing for opponents. Um, when you guard someone for 25, 26 seconds, and then maybe they get a long rebound, or or Jawan's just out there out hustling people, um, and we get a, a second possession. Um, it's so demoralizing to them, and he's just relentless on the glass, and, and we're glad that he's on our side. With 16 offensive rebounds as a team, is that something you feel like has been emphasized more this season, um, I guess more than when you were at North Dakota State, or um, is that an added emphasis, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's for sure something we've emphasized both um, offensively, offensively rebounding, and defensively. Um, you know, we're really – we're a pretty tall team across the board, and so we're going to have to rely on um, rebounding, and, and we always want to be positive in the rebounding differential. Obviously, we were tonight. Um, but, yeah, that's that's been a big focus for us in the preseason. Why, why did they go on that run early in the second half with all those threes they hit? Um, I mean, we kind of, I guess, let them catch a rhythm, um, and especially when you have good a good shooting team, once they get one or two to fall, um, it, the hoop gets bigger for them. Um, so we didn't necessarily come out in the second half with the right um, mindset or, or sense of urgency defensively, and they took advantage of that. Okay, so what's the locker room feel like today as opposed to a year ago around this time when you guys lost the opener? It's, a, it's very different. Different. Like we, like we, I can see a smile every, from <laughs> his you know, face. Smiles it's, are good. Yeah. Smiles are good. Yeah. It's very fun. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else for players? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.